We are so close with this device. There is a lot of good, there's a little bit of bad, but I tell you, the ceiling is pretty high. Let's talk about the Hammerhead Karuta. I was shocked. In fact, I genuinely thought I was doing something wrong. That before the device arrived, I went to download the Hammerhead app, okay? And the Hammerhead app was gonna be where I was gonna sync all my rides and, you know, create my profile and all that kind of stuff. Well, it doesn't exist. So you know how Garmin and Wahoo have created, basically their devices are now just sort of extensions of the app. The app is very much the brains of the equation. Hammerhead have tried to create something that you don't need a phone, you don't need an app. This is its own ecosystem. Now you can still connect this to your phone, you can still get the notifications from your phone on this device. In fact, this is the point that I actually want to double down on because, because this is running an Android OS, they've managed to tap into what Android does really, really well, which is how it delivers notifications, and just the general organization of the operating system. And they've been really smart because what as cyclists do we want organized? Well, we like sort of turn by turn directions being organized. We like, we like climbs, we like, you know, what's coming up, that kind of thing being organized for us. We like a lap summary organized for us. And yeah, we like notifications from phones organized for us. And all those Android users who have been whinging and whinging for years about how good the notifications are compared to iOS, well, they're kind of right because it plays out perfectly on this device. Sifting through your lap segments is far more like sifting through your Instagram DMs on a Samsung phone than that sort of sloppy convoluted way of doing it on a bike computer interface. Now the majority of these Karoo 2 reviews pretty much hit straight at their best feature, which is mapping. I'm not gonna go into that. There's enough out there about it. There's 742 YouTube videos proclaiming how good it is. And it is. The best part of it, really, I'll just quickly say, is the rerouting. The, the AI is second to none when it comes to, you know, you miss the turn or you kind of decide, oh, I'll cut that turn out. And normally a bike computer will have an absolute shit show about what's just happened. This thing is almost like it's chilled. It's like, oh, okay, you've missed that one. You could try this or you could try that. Oh, you don't want to do that either. All right, maybe try this. It's just, it's just delivered in a lot more of a user-friendly way. That said, there are some quirks on this device that I think we need to have a little bit of a dive into. So the first for me is the data font. It's just particularly ordinary. I don't know what it is about the thin numbering or the way that is displayed. I think it's just the font, to be honest with you. It's not nice to look at. I'm sorry, Karoo, just change that. The quirks really come down to the way you do navigate through the operating system. Little things like hitting the lap button does not immediately bring up the lap. So you have to be on the lap page or a page that you have created as a lap before hitting the button to see the new lap. Before we carry on guys, quick shout out to anyone who hasn't subscribed to the channel. I notice we still only run at about 33% of people who watch the video who are subscribed to the videos. Over the next couple of months, I wanna be trying to do a few more promo stuff and that kind of things, and that will really be subscriber-based things. So please make sure you do subscribe to the channel, like these videos, and the more people that do that, the less times I have to say this. So that's even better, all right? So the gestures take a little bit of learning, but you say, Chris, it's got buttons on it. These buttons surely are a really good way to avoid using that. The buttons are terrible. The buttons are absolutely terrible and they're in the wrong location. So for example, where the lap button is down here, to hit the lap button, you have to sort of hold the device like that, which automatically means that your finger on up here is likely to trigger that button which slots to the next page. So a lot of the time what I was finding is that I would go to hit the lap button instead of hitting the lap button 
my finger would press that button which would take me to the next page which is the map page and if you're on the map page the lap button doesn't work the lap button turns into a zoom so there are some quirks and the biggest unavoidable quirk is the mounting system and there is nothing wrong with this mounting system it works it's just another bloody mounting system so for me with the vision 5d bars I've got to try and find some proprietary mounting thing to do it. Otherwise, I can use the Garmin clip that you can see on here at the moment. But that doesn't really sit flush with the way that the Division Bar Garmin system came. So it kind of pops the, the device a bit higher. It doesn't look that good. Yeah, it's just another mounting system, which is like a different cabling system. There's not much they can really do about that, I understand that. And I do appreciate the fact they're trying to come at it through a different angle. But look, as far as price goes, you are very much in the same space as the Garmin 1030, the 830, the Wahoo Roam, the Bolt version 2. The choice is almost the best part of this for me. Because choosing between the Garmin and the Wahoo for the last decade, it's kind of been like choosing between a, a gray hoodie and a sort of gray flannel. It's like, oh, I'll just wear that one, whatever. And don't worry, I'm not drinking the Hammerhead Kool-Aid here. Like, okay, here, here it is, all right? It's a really solid device. It's not buggy. It, it doesn't feel like a prototype. And it very much feels like the ceiling for what this can do is a lot higher than what else is on the market. Buy it now, buy it now, if you are massively into mapping and you are seriously committed to learning the operating system. 100% go for it. Buy it now if you never want to have to log into Garmin Connect ever again and you'd prefer to sell your children than logging into that thing. As for everyone else, you don't need to upgrade to it. If you've got a Garmin 1030 or a Wahoo, Element Roam, you don't need to upgrade to it. But watch this space, because as soon as Hammerhead unleash, really, the potential of this SIM card slot, which I haven't talked about because it's kind of useless at the moment, especially here in Australia. But once they unleash the potential of that, then we have a proper game changer on our hands. There you have it guys, an actual positive bike computer review. I'm smiling at the end of a bike computer. Not Normally the bit at the end is me saying, if only we could get this and this and this. I kind of think we're actually tracking in the right direction. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Obviously, absolutely pleasure to put a bit of tech stuff for you. Can you tell I like doing tech stuff? Tech stuff and fashion, who needs the cycling, right? Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you real soon.